Bueno, a continuación, el comunicante que viene me va a perdonar que a lo mejor no pronuncie exactamente su nombre, Bogdan Trifunovic, que él viene de Serbia y nos va a contar el proyecto de digitalización de la biblioteca pública de su localidad en Kaka, creo, en Serbia. Y su, su comunicación se llama eh, Digitalización de colecciones audiovisuales. Potenciar las bibliotecas públicas a través de acuerdos entre la empresa privada y el sector público. Thank you. Your pronunciation was good. So, dear colleagues, I am really delighted to be in Spain in this beautiful city of Burgos. I will speak in English, which is not my native language. I would love to speak in español, I believe. I know only a few words, but nevertheless, last evening. I learned a short sentence in, uh, in your language, which I believe is very important for better communication among the people and uh, for rising up the spirits. In Espanol, it goes, that sentence goes like this, I believe. Dos pintas, por favor. <laughs> so you got my message. And with this positive spirit, uh, I will present you how one small public library in Serbia managed to cope present economical difficulties and uh, start uh, digitization of audiovisual collections on the local level, of course, with the help from the private sector. So first of all, a small introduction regarding our identity. I will start from the geography. We are, our city of Čačak is placed in the western part of Serbia and the library itself was established in the mid 19th century. It is the main library from 1994. It is the main library of district Morava and it serves a network of 50 and something, 55 I believe libraries of various levels. Our population uh, in the district is over 2,000 to 100,000 inhabitants and regarding the services of a library we have wide scope of services from traditional book lending, work with children, cultural programs to do, let's say, the, the most recent one. We are starting this year a pilot project regarding uh, lending books on the addresses of elderly people of handicapped and physical or physically and uh, 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 disabled person. So it is something new which, are, which we are starting at the moment right now. This is our web uh, website, uh, the English version, of course. Please observe, if you have time, to check, the, to check the web address, this section digitization, and this section regarding digital library itself. I will say something about my department. We established digitization center in 2008. It was the first of its kind among public libraries in Serbia, the second just behind the National Library. We are charged with the digitization and digital preservation of all kind of library material, IT services and support, web archiving, for instance, as well uh, automatization of our services. There are only two full-time employees, two librarians, but depending on the, what part of the year is or what are the projects on the agenda, there are between two and four part-time employees as well. That, uh, that is altogether between 10 and 20% of all staff we have at our disposal, which is quite high level. Because usually in uh, the public libraries in Serbia, one or two persons at most are tasked with uh, digitization activities. And regarding funding, our salaries are from the budget, but most other activities like buying equipment, equipment um, paying for outsourcing services are from the projects. Regarding our digitization activities, just one short and brief introduction. We started in 2006 our, our digitization of local history collections and we are always aiming on that local level of representation. We are digitizing usually public domain or those publications without copyright or clear copyright issues. 
we are part of European Awareness Best Practice Network from this year. And uh, in 2009, our Digital Library of Chacha project was awarded as the best public library project in Serbia by Association of the Main Libraries of Serbia. It is a network of 25 district or main libraries. This is actually the web portal of our digital library. Approximately one third of all digitized material is online, accessible to everybody for free. The rest is not accessible or there are some restrictions regarding copyright or some, something else. So let's start to talk about audiovisual collections and preservation of them. We realized that uh, mostly libraries and uh, institutions of culture are digitizing in Serbia, are digitizing publications, paper material, or let's traditionally say books, journals, newspaper, photos, etc. But one very important uh, part of uh, local heritage or culture, cultural heritage at all is neglected. This is audiovisual collections held by various institutions of various, le various level, levels and uh, sizes or by individuals as well. And uh, most of these collections are not treated well. So there is, a, uh, there is one important danger of losing that kind of content because of, let's say, technology is advancing, the media is not more readable, or simply uh, there is a human factor. And we adopted this uh, maxima of well-known Presco project, preservation for access, and we add through digitization. So I will talk about digitizing something to preserve it for the future, not about using it, using it at the moment. I hope that in the future it will be used for the wi widest possible audience, but at the moment we are making it digital to preserve it. And uh, talking about the condition, this is probably the worst case we saw it un until now. You please observe the bottles, empty bottles, some kind of rubbish, and tapes, videotapes. So this institution, one small TV station, is regarding its content as rubbish. Uh, we also accepted this uh, definition of audiovisual material, any recorded sound and or moving and or still image items public, published by IFLA, IFLA's guidelines, guidelines from 2004. And just quick, sorry, quick, uh, quick tour on the, on the different types of uh, information carriers. There are mechanical carriers like vinyl, uh, gramophone records, magnetic tape carriers, magnetic disc carriers like floppy disk hard drives, photochemical carriers like film rolls, and optical carriers like CDs and DVDs. In this presentation, I'll concentrate on magnetic tape carriers because we have most of experience with them. From 2010, we started this initiative of uh, collecting information and introducing potential partners with our aim. We wanted to uh, address primarily local media houses, TV stations, radio, and newspaper, because we believe they are the, the first step of uh, finding uh, valued content important for local history heritage. And we proposed simply, please give us your material, we will digitize it and return to you. But this uh, scenario didn't work because that kind of partnership didn't exist be, be, before it. Uh, media houses do not see in, in libraries, particularly public libraries, an equal partner regarding some business or doing some business. There are also, of course, huge copyright problems, which are sometimes unresolved, unresolved to us. And of course, they were concerned, what would library do with the material after it digitized and 
store it somewhere. Then we changed our strategy and proposed with them some kind of partnership. Basically, we wanted to persuade them that they will get something in their favor in terms of the money, let's say in that way, while library will get its content and the community will get preservation of one part of cultural heritage. And it started. First in 2010, we digitized one small uh, collection of the most important recordings of the one radio station in Western Serbia. The material regarded, as you can see, a span of some half a century. And I must say this was uh, done by outsourcing service. We hired professional radio technician because uh, the level the, the level of the quality of those rec sound recordings weren't so good, so a certain amount of remastering must be applied uh, for better sound quality in digital format. But the real story starts in January 2011 when we signed, probably as the first library to sign such a contract of, uh, let's say, business partnership or understanding between our house and uh, the biggest TV station in Čačak. Basically, we were granted to take outside the, of TV station facilities tapes, make them digitize, store them, make two copies on DVDs, while providing permanent online access to metadata to the people from that TV station because they wanted to, s to see what was on those numerous, not those, but some other tapes which weren't organized before, before this initiative. And so we started this uh, action, digitization of uh, TV archive in, in the autumn of 2011. Uh, we obtained enough money to buy some equipment from the Ministry of Culture you can see, you know, some basic uh, computers, DVD recorders, and which is very important, these SVHS and VHS tape players, which are rare already, because you usually you can buy only second-hand uh, pieces. We also bought a large hard drive storage for the preservation purposes. While TV station uh, agreed to pay for the half of the DVDs, because they say, they said to us, we wanted everything on DVDs. We don't have that kind of policy in, in our house regarding digitization to preserve something on DVDs because DVD is a fragile and non-stable uh, format, but you know we have to follow the regulation. And uh, they lend us some specialized equipment for digitization like Betamax uh, video players, which are <coughs> basically impossible to find today because it is an old and specialized TV equipment. And uh, contrary to the, when we hired radio technician for digitization of, radios, uh, of audio signal, everything is done in-house in our library. So we have created procedures and rules for the digitization of audio video material. We made an internal document, for instance, I will emphasize only this case. Procedure for digitization of VHS, SVHS tapes. We created it from nothing. We didn't have some kind of literature to follow. It basically identifies 12 steps in digitizing VHS, VHS tapes. The first step is clean the tape because usually it is very dirty. It is from some basement or some other closed rooms, non which, which are not used by, by uh, employees. And et cetera, et cetera, until you create a, a CD or DVD with some printed envelope of metadata uh, saying what is it about, what's on DVD and some other technical details. And when we talk about technical details, I will just shortly say something about it because I believe it is 
uh, good for librarians to get wider picture in that we rely heavily on open source and on, on free formats. For metadata part, we follow Dublin Core because we are accustomed to the Dublin Core format. It is uh, very simple to, to use it. It is the, all fields are optional and we use it before. So using the Dublin Core, we are able to connect the different projects into one, one bigger picture. For uh, video format, as I said, we have to follow DVD. So it is DVD video format, MPEG-2 encoding. But for uh, long-term digital preservation, we believe in AVI, audio interleaved interface, I believe, or something like that. Because uh, DVD, as I said, is uh, not regarded as, as a stable uh, media for long-term preservation. We have built a uh, file server based on a free solution, a free NAS or free network attached storage, which works quite well for us. And for the website, we use DSpace digital repository for, and I say, restricted online access to metadata and some content. That restricted means only librarians from our library and uh, partners could access it. It is, of course, the matter of copyright and some other issues. And uh, one, one example of metadata, I'm sorry, everything is Cyrillic, but nevertheless, you can recognize Dublin Core tags. I, I made just short description what are obligatory fields in our system. Please observe that creator or author is not obligatory because mostly we are doing with raw footages, raw material, non-edited and sometimes uh, not, uh, not broadcasted. So it is very hard to recognize who is the primar primary author or let's say who is the, the primary uh, mm, maker of, the, of this recording. So it is interesting compared to the traditional, let's say, published publica uh, printed publications, author is not in our, in our system obligatory field. So everything I explained here is done in order to transfer this relatively well organized analog archive of, of one station into this a collection of DVDs with printed metadata and of course database which these, which these metadata are held. This is just an example. We've created these drawers to put as much as we can uh, individual pieces in them. I know that uh, our partners are, they have similar, uh, similar cases uh, in their facilities, but the uh, ultimate goal is more toward this side. This is uh, on our digital library portal. We got permission to, to publish one small uh, part of uh, larger uh, video recording as a promotion of the whole, of course, uh, service and of the whole activity we are at the moment uh, uh, conducting. Uh, hopefully, in a matter of years, uh, more content will be available online. I'm looking forward one day that uh, at least it, uh, metadata will be public, uh, publicly available. And after that, of course, the content itself. At the moment, our, our local media digital archive and repository, which is an unofficial name, but I like to use it at the moment. It has, as you can see, over 1,000 and 500 hours of various audio and video recordings. They were made in this period 1961-2000. The access is restricted to metadata and the, to the content, of course, mm -hmm. but registered users could browse and search all the records through this space digital repository system. And let's make some conclusions. Uh, I decided to recognize 
the benefits of every partner in this story of public private private sorry private partnership first i believe that local media have now by far our partners by far better organization of their archives now they can browse through automatic system and search which is most important records metadata find easily and conveniently what they need totally opposite the the case of a year ago and they got it almost for free or sometimes for free the community have preservation of one part of of its cultural heritage which were in, da in dangers to be let's say uh, obliter obliterated and future generations future researchers would have access to local memory one part of our local memory and for the library side i decided to make several points what are the benefits from this project or let's say for this long term initiative of our public library which has only 30 employees by the way so we have obviously more content our funds in digital of uh, digital material expanded we have developed new Thanks. skills new procedures and the full scale system of digitization of audio vis visual collections we have better integration of various projects and system systems into our library digital library system we have further development of our strategy what will we do in the future because now we have better perspective what what are the needs of the time and the last two but they are may, maybe the most crucial in the context in the context of our conference it is new experiences in establishing partnership with the non public uh, services or partners and uh, better positioning of not just our institution but i believe all cultural institutions for the future preservation of uh, cultural heritage of course uh, i believe that uh, we have to follow the the dominant uh, discourse of our time and uh, be able to address all all uh, those circumstances thank you very much Muchas gracias.